What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, and man, we are here with a recap of another big Jackson State win this weekend, 38-16 over Tennessee State. And I'm going to say, I was actually more impressed this weekend with Jackson State than I was last weekend, even over FAMU, because the, the theme of college football this year, and I know some of you guys watch our Power 5 FBS content, some of y'all don't, but the theme of this year – has been teams playing down to their competition early in the season. And it was clear from the jump Jackson State had the better roster. They had more talent, more experience in certain places. Even though these players are new, they have more playing experience in terms of high-level football than what Tennessee State did. And they and they made quick work. Listen, 38-16 to me, isn't really a true representation of the score, especially because of that late score in which Hickbottom just threw a gorgeous pass. They got a big touchdown, but Jackson State, to me, handled business this weekend. And the, my biggest takeaway from the win is this. You could tell every week they're letting Shador do more and more and more within the offense. But what I like is that they're easing him into it. We saw – this weekend with C.J. Stroud with Ohio State, they kind of threw him to the wolves, and it cost Ohio State a big upset loss to Oregon. Jackson State isn't doing that. They they were they were pretty limited just underneath stuff last week. This week they kind of extended it to some mid mid range over the middle, at, you know that average distant targets. But then they also let them take some shots, which ended up in some touchdown passes and also some big plays on Jackson State's offense. The passing game is there, and I thought it would be, and I mentioned that on my preview. I think the wide receivers absolutely legit for this team. When you look at how he spread the ball out, too, Rucker had five catches. Corbin had two. Pinkett out the backfield had three. Hooks had four. Lanier had five. Newman had seven. He spread the ball to so many targets. That's the biggest thing for me. I know a lot of people want to talk about the play calling, the that the, the – the intelligence at the line of scrimmage, all that. That's all great. But what I like is Shador never just seems to lock in on one target. He has, when you have such a talented deep wide receiving core, you want to see your quarterback spread the ball out so the defense can't key on that number one wide receiver. It's the same reason the Cardinals went out and got some more receiving weapons for Kyler Murray because you could kind of, well, I mean, D Hop is a monster, but what defenses were going to try to do is scheme for D Hop. Now you add talent to that wide receiving core, you can spread the ball out. When you look at this Jackson State receiving core, they have five, six options that in any given week can lead the team in receiving. And for me, I know Rucker had 72 yards with and was the leader in terms of yardage. For me, I still think this offense runs through the Lanier Shador connection. I love their I love what they can do. What Lanier offers is almost like I know Rucker offers the size safety blanket. So if he has to go downfield and throw it up into into one on one or double coverage, Rucker's his guy. But what I mean by safety blanket is if you run Lanier, you know, across the middle, you keep him in the mid range. He's fast enough where the play breaks down. He can break away from his guy, and then Shador can dump it to him in sort of that short to intermediate range. And he took one to the house. This week, just off of that, he only averaged about nine yards per catch, took one to the house, but he always seemed to be there. And like I said in my preview, I still think the underneath drag and crossing routes are going to be a problem with Lanier because you cannot switch on him because he's too fast. And God forbid he, he's a matchup nightmare and a linebacker or one of those one of those big safeties gets matched up on him. He's going to burn them across the middle. And so I love that Rucker keeps proving that he is a monster. He's not a huge route runner, but man, when it comes to going up and getting the ball, Rucker is your guy. He's doing exactly what I thought Malachi Wadman would do. Wadman had one catch this weekend, but Rucker has established himself as one of the top options in this offense. And I can't help but be impressed with what, what he's brought the one criticism I will have for Jackson State is I would like to see the run offense get better. Pick it with 11 carries for 55 yards. But outside of that, everyone else had either negative or no rushing yards, and they only averaged as a team two yards per carry. 
when you when once that increase in competition comes, they are going to have to be able to run the ball more efficiently. And when you look at their third down percentage and how they did on third downs, they did find themselves in third and short often. That is a recipe for disaster once you start playing more and more talented teams coming up on the schedule. You have to try to run the ball early or get some short passes going and get your playmakers in space to get to those third and manageables and or the defense is going to be able to take advantage if they're creative enough on the defense. That's really the only huge criticism I have for Jackson State this week. The run game's got to be better, and I think it will, but they let Shador open it up. He had an amazing game. Um, and I mean, he set, I believe he set multiple records, or if not, came very close to it, had 362 passing yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions again, outstanding for a freshman. I've been nothing but impressed with Shador, and I, I have nothing up, wrong to say about his performance. And now, in terms of the defense for Jackson State, the number one thing I want to address, we know the secondary is real, we know the linebacker is real, they did – such an outstanding job of stopping the run. The run was the one key for Tennessee State that they had to establish, and Jackson State shut it down. And this kind of blends in with our next topic, what went wrong for Tennessee State. The run game was atrocious. They tried, they ran the ball 42 times for only 70 yards. That's less than two yards per carry, 1.7 actually. Jackson State did amazing job. That was their weakness last week, and I mentioned that in the preview. Their defensive tackles over-pursued, and they were able to find some cutback lanes. Did not happen this week. The front seven, with especially Coinus Miller, man, he is, you know, I'm an Auburn guy. I love Coinus Miller. That guy's legit, and I'm glad that he's finding a place on this defense, and I thought he had an outstanding game this weekend, and those defensive tackles were making some plays. I believe even Katron Evans got in there. Antoine Owens on the D-line has been a monster week in and week out so far for the season. So for me, the defensive line and the linebackers did a way better job this week in that run defense. And for Tennessee State, man, you know, I heard – I was watching one of the other channels, and they they put it perfectly. This is – this is what Eddie – what Eddie George is going through is what Dion had to go through in the spring – He's got he came in with this roster. He hasn't had a chance to even recruit for this team yet. Let's just say Tennessee State is going to be okay. It's just right now, I don't think they have the horses to really run in the OVC and or up against a team like a Jackson State. We saw last week at Grambling, they had a lot of shortcomings, and they were really they were really exposed at times against Jackson State. Once Jackson State's talent started kind of kicking in, they forced a big fumble. I believe uh, Nugget recovered that one. And they just couldn't run the ball, and they did. They don't have a quarterback, guys, that you can rely on. Like when Jackson State's run game got shut down this weekend, Shador was able to just throw it to six different guys, and all of them were able to make plays. Higbottom and Bryant, that, that's not the type of players they are, and they weren't able to make the plays. The receiving core isn't as deep. Um, I believe it's Ramon played pretty well, four catches, 64 yards, and Johnson did pretty well, but – Really and truly, Hickbottom and Bryant were overmatched in terms of this Jackson State defense. Probably be one of the better defenses they see all season. Um, they combined for 194 and a touchdown, but you got to do more than that against this Jackson State defense. And I really thought Star uh, Starling was going to be able to do more guys, and he really was shut down. The offensive line for Tennessee State had no – had no chance against that defensive line. Jackson State controlled the line of scrimmage this week. I think last week you could say it was kind of like a 50-50 thing, even that FAMU won the line of scrimmage. This week Jackson State left no doubt. Their offensive line did great in terms of pass protection. I thought they could do better at run and run blocking, but the defensive line dominated the entire aspect of the game. Got after the quarterbacks multiple times, shut down the run game, held them to less than two yards per carry. So that was really what went wrong for Tennessee State. And, you know, my you know one of my last topics here is who are the biggest threats to JSU? So, you know, I, I hate week one and week two overreactions. And I was watching some of the other, you know, the SWAC channels, and a lot of them had these, like, blatant overreactions of, of for everyone on both sides of, of this game. And for me, I, I still feel like there's some clear threats, like, when I look at even at the D1 level, there's still clear threats for Alabama, who's one who's easily the best team in the country right now on their schedule. But for me, 
looking at Jackson State's schedule, I still feel like they're going to have some challenges next week. ULM, I think they should win. But that's an FBS team. You never know in a game like that. And so I just want to see how Jackson State responds to being on that stage with all the pressure of the swag on them. Then on the road at Alabama a and I, I, I still think that's going to be a good game. Everyone's talking about defense this, defense that. Listen, it's going to be a slugfest in Huntsville. I will be. I don't think either team is going to be able to blow out the other one. But as we get closer to that game, I still think Jackson State is going to have a tough time with them. And I think Alabama, Alabama a and is going to have a tough time with Jackson State. But I think people are just – writing it off like, oh, they don't have a great defense, so therefore we don't have to worry about them. Alabama A&M is a legit threat. I also still think Southern and Alcorn are legit threats as well. Um, And for me, Alcorn being the last week of the season is so big for Alcorn because it's going to allow that offense and that team to gel late in the season. And you're going to get the best Jackson State versus the best Alcorn. And I'm excited for that game in Southern. The only reason I say that is because the only weakness we've really seen thus far from Jackson State is the run game. And Southern can run the ball better than anyone. And for me, I don't think Jackson State has seen an offensive line as big and as as, as dominant as Southern is. So that's why I want to see that game. I think it's strength versus weakness on both sides of the ball because if they can shut down the run, Southern definitely can't throw the ball right now. So I want to see that game. And I also think Southern's front seven is going to be an interesting test for this Jackson State offensive line. So I think those two are easily those three teams are easily the threat. Also want to mention I'm an Auburn guy. I don't want everyone to write off Alabama State as just a nobody. Listen, if you watch the first half of that Auburn Alabama State game, Alabama State was in that game for the most part. And to try to say that just because Auburn put 60 on them that they're not going to compete in the SWAC is just unfair to everyone. And I also want to say I thought Bethune is going to be someone you're going to have to watch out for. I still think both of those teams can compete. Alabama State, in my opinion right now, could be the best defense that Jackson State sees all season in terms of complete package, in terms of front seven linebackers, And secondary, Jaquez Payton had an outstanding game against Auburn this past weekend, the transfer from Jacksonville State. I still think those teams will be the sleeper teams. But for me, I really think Jackson State, it's Alabama A&M, Alcorn, and Southern are really the only, like, are the three biggest threats to JSU. I'm not not picking my – not. Picking my shot right now, not picking those games that's come later. But I still want to say, everyone who thinks this is going to be a walk in the park to the end of the season, y'all got to watch more college football because it's never a walk in the park, even for the greatest teams of all time. The greatest teams of all time have still had one or two weeks where either they didn't bring their A game or that team brought their A game and it gave them a run for their money. So don't just write off everyone in the swag just because JSU has looked so impressive these first two weeks. And now, What's next? I mentioned ULM for Jackson State. Going to be a huge game. Going to be an FBS versus FCS matchup. I still think Jackson State, even though they won't be the betting favorite, because for some reason they weren't the betting favorite this weekend, people were – I don't know. Listen, if you did anything and watched my preview before the game, you should have went and put your money on Jackson State because that is a seal right there. And listen – Whatever the money line is for the ULM game, I'm going to try to have it before I do my preview this this week. Put all your money on the money line for Jackson State. I'm just telling you, do it, and we'll also have a score prediction, so maybe you'll win some money just in case they lose if you get the score prediction right. But also, Tennessee State, I believe, goes to Kentucky State next weekend for an interesting matchup there. But, guys, if you're new, hit that subscribe button, like this video, man. Appreciate all y'all support. We're almost to a thousand subs. Never thought in a million years I'd be saying that. College football is at full steam, man. We're heading into week three. I couldn't be more excited. We got this. We got this recap dropping. Our instant reactions drop Sunday, so go check that out. We also got our top ten poll that drop. That's going to drop later this afternoon. Preview start tomorrow because we got some Thursday night games. We got to cover, so tune in for those, man. But for right now. The Blue Bloods are out.